So my dear brothers and sisters, it's another wonderful day again that Heavenly Father has enabled us actually to see it again another day. I want to say thank you very much, my brothers and sisters, for the greatest support that you're giving uh, to this channel. And I want to say keep watching. We are here together and we want exactly people to be strengthened and also our brothers and sisters to be edified in the ways uh, of the Lord. And for those who are joining us for the first time, I want you to know that uh, we love you and we appreciate you and that the Lord also loves you and we want you to be part and parcel of us. And um, if you are not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I will actually encourage you at one time, one Sunday, come and worship with us. Find in whatever parts of the world that you are in, find any place where there is the church Okay, there's a church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Find where there's a meeting there and uh, you are fully welcomed there and uh, make sure you, you know, worship with us. And at times when you reach there, just tell the bishop. I heard from one of the guys on YouTube. His name is Brother Gabriel Mira. He's the one that directed me to come here. Please make sure you do and you will never regret it for the rest of your life. Now, I don't know if most of us have ever felt useless in one way or the other, that you feel like you are a failure, you cannot actually move on with life. And anything you touch, at times even people will tell you you are not good enough. You know, people will tell you you are not good enough, you are a failure. You know, have you ever felt like that? Believe you me, I've been there, I've been in that hole one time. And I'm telling you, it's, it's very horrible, especially if you do not have people who will actually extend a hand to you to lift you up. Very, very horrible. And I've always told people, please don't make people feel useless. Do not at any time make somebody feel useless. I'm telling you, it, it is bad. It kills them. It kills them. Now, I'd like you just to join me in actually focusing on one of the testimonies here that was issued by one of these wonderful brothers here. And let's hear what exactly he went through and how he was able actually to overcome this. Please welcome. Have you ever felt like a failure? Like the world was collapsing in all around you as a husband, a father, a mother, a wife, a brother, a sister? I sure have. in 2006 to 2009, my wife and I were doing everything that we felt that we should be doing. We were saving money and we thought things were going pretty well. We had our first little boy coming into the world and things were great. Then in 2008 and 2009, we had the economic collapse here in the United States. We realized we weren't prepared enough. Soon we found ourselves living in a small basement apartment, just grateful to have a roof over our head with so many external forces coming in and stressing us out. As we were going through this, I had so many dark nights, the anxiety, the sleepless nights, wondering how I was ever going to get out of the situation that I was in. This financial collapse was basically ruining me. I didn't know where to really go or turn to. I went to the one place that I thought could bring me peace, and I started praying more with our Heavenly Father. And as I was going through these financial hardships and things were really bad, I was in a very dark tunnel. This tunnel that was so long, I couldn't even see a light at the end of the tunnel. I knew I wasn't alone. I had people who loved me. I had people who cared for me. But as I was going through these hard times, I wondered, God, why? Why me? Why does this have to happen to me? I've tried to do everything you've asked me to do in the past. And I figured it would be so much easier just to blame everybody else, that it was everybody else's fault that I was in this situation. What I soon realized was this, that all my previous actions had consequences. 
And I had to face up to the fact that I was the one who made these choices and decisions in the past, that I'm the one that made stupid decisions and decided to buy, you know, things that weren't really necessary. As I was going through these difficult times, I went to individuals that I knew who had gone through some very similar experiences. Individuals who had had hard times and were able to come out of those hard times. I found a lot of comfort. I found a lot of peace in learning through from other people. One of the things that one of my friends mentioned to me was something that was very simple. I want you to write down 50 things a day that you are grateful for. What you write down on day one, you cannot write down on day two. What you write down in the first two days, you cannot write any of those things down on day three. And I want you to go through these 10 days. As you go through these 10 days, I want you to think about all of the blessings that you have been given. What I realized at the end of the 10 days was this, that no matter how hard a life is, no matter how difficult it is, that I still had so many blessings. The things that mattered to me most, I still had. I still had a roof over my head. I still have my wife. I still had my little boy. Bye, son. I love you. I love you. But I was still in this dark, long tunnel that I've been working at for years, and I felt like I would never be able to get out. And then my friend came to me and said, Richard, you've gone through some very difficult times. You still have those sleepless nights. But one of the things that you have to do is this. You have to learn how to love yourself, no matter the choices and decisions that have been made. I want you to go out and do things every day that's going to make you happy, whether that's taking your kids for a walk, whether that's going to the park, whether it's going up the canyon and enjoying time in nature. I want you to do something daily that's going to help you realize that you have worth. See, I remembered when I was a little boy that there was a poster that hung in my room. It said, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. As I went and I was experiencing this, I soon found myself that I was a lot happier, that things were getting better. He said, it's great that you're doing better, but what about those that are closest to you that still might be struggling? You need to make sure that things are good with them. And as I went and made sure I was equally yoked with my wife and my little boy and those that I was closest to, things started changing. I found peace and the darkness and the anxiety was lifted. I remember one time as I opened up my scriptures that there was a verse that said, you can either humble yourself or you can be compelled to be humbled. I realized I couldn't change any of the choices and decisions that happened in the past. The only thing I could change is what I would do going forward. I had read that our Savior fasted and prayed for strength. And I went for over four and a half years fasting and praying every Saturday night that I could have the peace, the comfort, the guidance that I needed to get to where I wanted to go. I remember there was a quote that I had read from President Hinckley that said this, Pray as though everything depends on God and work as though everything depends on you. And that's exactly what I went out and did. I knew our Savior was there for us to be able to help us. After a long seven and a half years, I finally got to the end where I was basically out of that tunnel. It was the hardest thing I had ever done. Hardest thing I've still done to this point in my life. But I would not change it. See, it was during those seven and a half years, the trials that I went through, I realized that no matter how high that mountain was, no matter how big those obstacles are, that we can overcome those. I'm so grateful I went through those challenges. I was able to learn so many things as I went through and I was tested and tried that it was the only way that I could learn those things. Instead of pushing God out of my life and edging him out and blaming everything on him that had happened to me years before, that he decided to take those trials and use it as an opportunity to become closer to him. 
to be able to become more of the person that He wants me to be. To be able to learn how to be more kind, learn how to be more loving. No matter the challenges, no matter the difficulties that come, remember this, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. He loves you. He wants you to be happy. And He wants you to become closer to Him, to have the peace that you need at this time in your life. So my dear brothers and sisters, that is what exactly we need to remind ourselves. God does not make any junk. Remember, you are not a failure. You are a child of God, and He wants you to succeed. That is one of the greatest things. You know, take advantage of the little things, small things that people are actually neglecting. You will end up realizing how much blessed you are. Because sometimes we take things for granted and we think that God has actually forgotten us. But we need to be very, very vigilant and appreciate and develop a heart of gratitude in everything that we do have. And I know this is true. And I know that the Lord really loves us all and he created us in his image. And when he looked at it, he said it is beautiful and wonderful. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you. And I'm looking forward to see you again next time. Have a great day.